So today we're going to kind of start, like I said, with a basic GIS introduction on how this works, what it is, what we do with it, why we use it. So for From the Woods today, I'm going to kind of start off by introducing myself as to kind of how I got into GIS and things like that. So my name is Michael Ehrman. Um, I have an Associates of Science in Computer and Information Systems from Hazard Community and Technical College. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Forestry with a minor in Mapping and GIS at the University of Kentucky. I'm currently in the progress of working on my Master's of Science in Digital Mapping, which is a kind of expanded version of GIS that involves web programming and um, layer-based programming, as well as system-based programming. Um, so I am a former GIS technician when I was on campus that I worked for um, Facilities Information Services. I did a lot of GIS work on and around campus, and I was really passionate about it. Um, I also, once I graduated, with my um, Bachelor's of Science in Forestry. I went and taught computer science um, at Lee County High School for a couple of years where I taught programming languages such as Python, Java, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, PHP, and a realm of other different languages. And then currently I work for the University of Kentucky Forestry Extension Associate. And kind of the area that I kind of focus on is um, timber harvesting. So moving on, so, so so what we have here is we have what is GIS and what is cartography. So when it comes down to it, people kind of assume that GIS and cartography are one and the same, and that's not exactly true, but it kind of is at the same at the same time. So when we say that they are different, but they also go hand in hand pretty well. So a geographic information system is a system that creates, manages, analyzes all types of data. So when we do that, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to map spatial phenomenon with the globe, with the earth. And we can kind of use that to kind of to kind of put data and a visual representation of the world around us without necessarily having to write it. Because like they say, right, especially when it comes to cartography is the study of designing and drawing maps. So essentially what you're doing with cartography is you're taking those principles of trying to figure out our world around us and put it in a visual kind of representation. The study behind that is cartography. So GIS is kind of creating it, developing it, and getting that data together. And then you use the cartography side of it to actually design and draw those maps. So there's some people that have certain categories within in this subset where they mainly just focus on cartography. They take data or GIS data that other people have used and convert that into maps. And it's kind of a pretty interesting topic there, right? And the thing that's nice about pictures is you can kind of see a picture and it's expressed in all different languages and things like that. Anybody, whether you speak English, Spanish, German, Portuguese, etc., you see, you can see a visual representation of those maps and kind of know what's going on there without necessarily having to be able to read the language it's written. So like, so as they say, that's kind of a great way to look at how we're visualizing this thing. Right. First off, we need to kind of talk about some of the software that's used for developing um, GIS data. So what we have is we have really two main players. There's some smaller players that use it, but the two main ones for this are ArcPro and QGIS. So what's the difference from that? So with QGIS, yeah, we need to first figure out what is FOSS. So that's kind of a term we use within our kind of the realm of GIS, and that's a free and open source software. So with that, when we have a free and open source software, that is when contributors are developing products that are free for the user to use, right? So for QGIS, a FOSS serves some powerful capabilities, but its catalog for GIS processing is extremely limited when compared to ARC Pro, which we'll get into that a little bit here in a second. But the main thing about QGIS is we will remember that it's free and it's open to everyone, and it's really good for someone that's kind of just starting out in cartography or GIS that wants to kind of master these skills. It's still a very powerful tool, but when it comes down to it, we also have ARC Pro, which is a paid subscription. Now, they have some sub subscription services from um, $100 for, you know, individuals and people looking to just kind of just kind of get their feet wet or to um, people that are just graduating from college and are, you know, in the realm of GIS and want to kind of continue that, want to kind of continue working with maps, and that's a cheap option for them. But then you get to the advanced Pro license. For businesses which can cost up to $4,100 and some change um, for a yearly license. So, but now um, I kind of want to put you all on a little secret here. Um, that's kind of why the, the emoji was supposed to kind of be a shush emoji, like kind of like, you know, keep it on the down low, but um, it doesn't really look that way. It's kind of not as, not as perfect as I had hoped it would look, but uh, so I'm going to talk kind of about like an MOOC license. So what that is with Arc Pro is it's kind of a way to where Esri puts out these Esri, which is the company that develops Arc Pro, I should have mentioned that, I apologize. So Esri puts out these trainings that people can do for Arc Pro. So with Esri, 
they do, they have these NMOC licenses here. And what it is, is essentially training courses that Esri puts together that people can use. Like you see here, we have Spatial Data Science New Frontier. And if you're actually interested in this, these trainings are excellent, by the way. They're excellent. So here we can see registration is closed for this one. But when you register for these classes, they give you a free ArcGIS license to use in these courses, which you can also use for your kind of, it's still an active license, so you can use it for your various other tasks that you would use with it, that you would do with GIS. So like we also have one here you can sign up for, which is imagery in action. So you can see here, you can come here and register. You want to create an account. It's a free account. Register. It gives you license. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform imagery and action things, such as like, it'll have you deal with some rasters and things like that, which we'll get into more here in a second. So the next part is we kind of need to talk about some vectors and rasters. So these are your two main data types, essentially within GIS. So a vector is made up of points, lines, and polygons. So as we can see here, this picture on the right is we have individual X, Y location. And then as you get to lines, we have composed of many, at least two vertices or points that are connected. So, right. So in GIS, we either call them a vertice, node, or point. And what they do is they create line segments. So you can have your points that just show a geographic location versus your lines versus your polygons, right? And then your polygons are something that has three or more vertices that are connected and closed. So you just got to remember that you're building these layers here from points and then into lines and into polygons, but you can also keep them just as points, lines, and polygons individually. But you have to can, you have to stack, you have to start with points and then your points turn into lines and then your lines turn into polygons. And I'll kind of show you all how some of that works here. All right, so when we do that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with um, what's going on with QGIS. So I started up QGIS here, I've started a blank, a blank template. All right, so we kind of want to analyze what's going on in the world. So we have here, one good way to do this is, they, is Google and Esri put out these standard X, Y tiles, and they're kind of easy to use. So right here, we can add this tile here that shows the satellite image. So with this satellite image, we can actually go to online and kind of type in and search for these. So we come in here and I can type in Google X, satellite X, Y tiles, right? So here we can see we can see URLs that show some of these maps. So we have a roadmap here that uses this, this XYZ tiles to create a kind of a raster image, right? So as we get to that, we can come in here in the QGIS and I can come here and I can make a new connection. I can, we can make the name roadmap. And then we can add that URL that's there for it and we'll hit okay. We've added our roadmap there. Now I'm gonna turn off this layer and we'll add the roadmap layer to it. And you can see now that we have a roadmap layer that we can use to see some of the road data that we want or things like that, that we can kind of navigate through. Now, what I want to do though, is I have actually created this morning, I created a layer and here's how we're going to add layers. So to add a layer, you go into layers and then add layers and we can go to a vector layer. We can come in here into vector and right here, you can see this, I have that. And we have, I put in the documents folder today, a location of quicksand. So whenever you're adding a shape file to QGIS, you want to click the one that says dot shape whenever you download a shape file. I'm going to show you all how to download shape files here in a moment, but for right now, I'm just going to get this on here so we can kind of zoom to it. Is that closed? Now, when I zoom to this layer that I had created this morning, I'm going to zoom to layers. And then we can see here we have, so we can see here we have a location of the Wood Utilization Center. Now I kind of want to see where this is in relevance to the world if we're in the state. So what I can do is I'm going to come back to Google here. I'm going to go to the Census Bureau. I'm going to download a U.S. County shape file. Come in here and download our county shape file. And I'm going to use the county, um, U.S. County. 500k.zip. And then it's in our downloads folder. I'm going to go ahead and unstrip and extract this. So whenever you download these zip files, you want to extract them into a folder you can remember because then you're not going to be able to access them if you don't get them out of this compressed zip folder. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to extract all here. And then hopefully you can still see the screen where I'm browsing to it. I will browse to my From the Woods today and we'll extract it into this folder. Now, when I come into QGIS, I'm going to add this vector layer.
And now, once this transcribes, we should be able to zoom out and see that it covers the United States now where it once was. So we can see as we turn this off, it's almost a perfect representation of the United States. You can even have it down here to Hawaii, right? So this was kind of the first moment I realized GIS was pretty cool because it shows that all this geographic information, even though you take it from different data sources, you can see that it all relates to certain projections. Now, projections, we can talk about that for for two years if we want, because there's people that spend their whole life studying projects. So essentially what a projection is though, is think of it like trying to take an orange and trying to peel those layers off of that orange and then trying to make it flat and into a almost rectangular picture. It's really difficult to do. So there are entire groups of people, entire groups of cartographers and GIS professionals that are dedicated to solely trying to figure out ways to mitigate these kind of problems that happen. So what happens when you do a projection, though, is you distort a land area, either distort land area or the shape. And this right here is a Mercator projection, as we're looking at, that most people are familiar with. And as you can see here, Greenland is the same size as Africa, as it looks in this one. But in reality, Greenland is actually one-eighth the size of Africa. So we, so we can see here how these, as you get closer to the poles, that we have to distort that area to create, to keep the shapes kind of the same. Or you have to either distort shape to keep the area the same. So projections are very important to kind of know about as you get into more GIS data. So now we want to just get the Kentucky level off of this. So we know if we go in here into the attribute table, we can see the name of our state. So we know that. So the state FP is 21. So if I come in here and I click on, sorry, having a difficult time seeing this with it blocking my thing. We have what's known as the information tab. We hit this. And it gives us the information. So now our state FP is 21. So we can come in here and filter it. And we can do state FP, which actually I don't, hopefully everyone can say we can do state FP equals, and we'll do sample, we'll do 21. And now when I run this, we should just get Kentucky out of that. So we have all our Kentucky level layers there. And now I want to be able to see where my quicksand location is. So I can drag this on top of it. And now, as you see, we can see the quicksand location there in Breathitt County. And since I also still want to be able to have my counties there, I'm going to actually turn this into a transparent layer so that way only the outline will show. So you can come in there. Oh, whoopsie. So we're going to make this a transparent layer. So now we can see that we have this kind of effect here that shows us in transparency. So when I zoom in, but we can still see what's kind of going on in the background here, which actually I'm not a huge fan of this. So I'm probably just going to change it to a simple field and we'll just do that. And now we can still see our county outlines, but we can see straight through them. Okay. And now I kind of want to show you all how to represent some GIS data with that kind of relates somewhat to forestry. So we have some patches of trees here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to create a layer. I'm going to call it a new shape file layer because that's a vector layer that we're going to want to use. Hold on a second. Sorry, the stuff that's in my way of the, there we go. So we're going to name this, we will name it, um, let's name it trees real quick. And then we're going to give it a geometry type of point. And then we're going to want to put this on Kentucky State Plain for our projection. So we're going to do that with the feet US. And then we're going to add a couple fields to it. So one, I'm going to add DBH. And we're going to make that a integer, which is a whole number. And then we're going to add that field to the list. And then now we're going to make a string and we're going to call it species. We're going to make, we'll make that link 80. So that's our maximum. If we do, we'll add that to it. We're going to create this layer. So now we have trees. And now I want to add data to that. So now I'm arbitrarily going to pick one of these trees here. And we're going to call this one. We're going to say, we're going to call this one's ID 1. And I'm not exactly sure what this tree is or what its DBH is, so I'm going to make an arbitrary DBH. So we're going to have 25, DBH 25. We'll do, um, we'll just call it a white oak. Then we're going to add another point, and we can add another point here. 
not sure what it is, but I'm gonna call it, we're just gonna arbitrarily pick another DBIs and we'll call it like 14. Then we'll do our species and we'll call it, mm, let's call it red oak. Okay. And now I have represented on this map these trees in this location. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this data. And now if I wanna show these by their DBH size, I can come into properties and go into symbology and we can do a, we will do a categorized here, make the value of DBH and then we'll classify it. And then now we can see that we have very, based on our DBH, we can see various colors for what our DBH is. So we can see here on the left side that we have our, this DBH 25, we'll see it as a red, it's DBH 14, we'll see it as 14. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you all how to draw polygons to get the area of this cornfield here. Okay. So, what we want to do is we're going to come here into layers and create a layer. And we're going to do a new shape file layer. And we're going to call it, uh, we'll just call it field. The geometry type um, polygon. We will give it a representation Kentucky single zone. Um, and we'll just, we don't need any name fields for that one, so we'll just do that. And I'm also going to change my CRS projection to take single zone so that way we get the correct application for it. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing this polygon real quick. So now let's say I want to get the area of this. I want to know what the size of this field is. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to quit edits. I'm going to save them. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to the attribute table. I'm going to do what's called field calculator here. And we're going to create a new field. We're going to call it size. We're going to make it a decimal number. And we're going to come in here into geometry. And we're going to use area. So this should generate the area of that polygon. Now, we know this is, in, this is in square meters, so we want it in acres. So I have here the conversion for acres from square meters. So for the conversion is, um, you're supposed to divide by 4047. So we're gonna come in here into, and create another field calculator. I'm gonna call this one area acres. We're going to make that a decimal number. And so we're going to take the size and we're going to divide it by 4047. And now we get, okay, so now we see that the size of this polygon we created is about five and a half acres. So now that is kind of a short gist of how GIS kind of works. That's just kind of a what I wanted to show you all, and I appreciated you all having me on here to kind of show how we can show some of this data and incorporate GIS into the free and allow, you know, the, the common person that doesn't might not have GIS background, but has the ability to play with it and see it and kind of use it. And I just appreciate your all's time.